So if you are like uh, coming back from a vacation two weeks and you want to uh, see what's new, the Viking introduces you to everything that's new. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a really fun way of engaging employees, I think. Yeah, definitely. I was uh, really surprised by this. And uh, that's what I'm looking for when uh, looking for a human-centric tool. So being welcomed uh, by by the tool and being somehow entertained as, as well yeah. and get all the information there. Yeah. And, I, and I love that you use the word entertained because that kind of shows the emotionality, right? I mean, if we speak about processes, we always go like input, output, who's responsible, blah, 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 yeah, blah. Yeah. But, but people are still people, right? It, yeah. It's a people business and people want to feel uh, welcome. They want to be informed, even if they could do it on themselves. Uh, so that's the whole point of change management. And that's a big part of our work. Welcome to the New Process Podcast. Learn all the tools, methods, and best practices combined with people, e emotions, and a, and a human-centric mindset to rethink your process and push it to the next level. Uh, and, here, and, here, and here is your host, Marco Kloppenberg. Yeah, welcome to episode 19 of the New Process Podcast. Today, I'm talking to Vincent Fischer from Modell Aachen to learn more about their tool, KuWiki. Vincent joined Modell Aachen in 2018 to advise clients on processes with a focus on management systems in the role of a process management consultant. Over the years, he transitioned into his current role as head of consulting and COO. Modell Aachen was founded in 2009 from Fraunhofer ITP, the largest institute for production engineering in Europe. They describe themselves as obsessed with human-centric process management that creates impact interactivity between process participants and process descriptions are at the core of their software with an annual growth rate of over 30 percent more than 800 organizations in germany austria and switzerland are using qwiki as i learned in the interview winston was born and raised in the city of heidelberg and he told me that it's almost impossible to avoid playing rugby when growing up in heidelberg But after numerous international appearances for the German national team, he concentrated on his studies in the field of industrial engineering. And now he's my guest in the New Process Podcast. So in this episode, you will learn what QWiki is all about. We'll talk about the underlying philosophy, how they document processes, and how the tool supports the new process principles to rethink processes and to get to a more human-centric BPM. He'll also share information on the future roadmap, their pricing model, as well as how to test the tool. And you'll learn what the Viking is all about. So enjoy the episode with Vincent Fischer. And now, let's start to rethink processes. Yeah, welcome, Vincent. I'm super interested to learn more about KuWiki today. Um, another tool in my search for a human-centric BPM tool. So let's see what we can learn today. Welcome, Vincent. Thanks for having me, Mirko. Nice to meet yeah. you here. Yeah, great. Then let's uh, start with a check-in. So what do you prefer in an aircraft, aisle or window seat? So uh, I think I can't um, uh, open to an airline guy with saying that I love riding a train. <laughs> But, uh, if, if I fly, which which happens uh, more, more often... Um, I prefer the window seat, I guess. Um, that's because I'm, I'm a big, uh, big sleeper and, um, that's, that, uh, gives me the chance to sleep undisturbed without people, uh, having to climb over me. And, uh, besides that, if people uh, get off the, get off the plane, you know, you know, the, the people who hurry a lot and, uh, I usually don't. So I can, uh, let the others go first if I'm at the window seat. Yeah. Just relax. That's very good. And what is your favorite airport? Uh, so, so. Thinking about that, um, of course, the big ones are impressive, right? Uh, I mean, landing in sure. uh, in uh, New York and Jennifer, Joe of Ken uh, John F. Kennedy and all those, um, those are great. But I really personally love the small ones uh, because they have shorter distances and, and probably uh, because I also associate them with exotic adventures abroad, right? Um, and I think one of the smallest I've I've been uh, has been in Indonesia. It's called Ende Airport. Um, and it was incredible to me because um, there were the same six people uh, who were the ticket sellers. Uh, they also were the security and were checking all the uh, all the persons. Um, and then they turned out to be the flight crew. So so that was amazing to me, <laughs> and uh, I really enjoyed um, the experience there. 
<laughs> yeah, that, that's cool. Reminds me a little bit of Mannheim. I was flying once or several times uh, from Mannheim to Hamburg, and that airport is so tiny. Yeah. <laughs> it's really that small. that one is really small. But um, I grew up in Heidelberg, and um, oh, most yeah. people don't know that uh, Heidelberg actually has um, an, an not. It's not an airport, right? But it's um, like. A street, you could say, um, because that was what the uh, American soldiers used for the um, the um, air post, and uh, so so that's really uh, that's the smallest I airport I know in Germany. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, I've been in Heidelberg only once. I can't remember that uh, trip because it was after a long party night. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> sounds like Heidelberg. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, uh, but uh, let's get back to the check-in. And uh, what was the best process you have ever experienced? Um, so I guess uh, personally, I'm I'm really obsessed um, by processes that are directly contributing to value that is delivered to end customers, right? Because I think um, in an essence, that's That's the whole point of an organization, right? That's their um, that's their their purpose um, in in the best uh, sense, and uh, often um, it is through those processes that they build or maintain their competitive advantage. So it might come to your surprise that I uh, would answer differently, right? That uh, I really really love a well managed process that handles internal projects, because because I think the problem it solves is just huge because. Let's face it, many organizations are very good with initiating new projects, planning projects, making plans, um, starting things, uh, coming up with great names for strategic initiatives. But in reality, I rarely see organizations that are really great at finishing and actually closing internal projects. And um, many things in reality never really come to an end. They just die somewhere on the way. And so that's why I really um, like seeing companies that are running their internal projects uh, well. And I mm -hmm. think that's that's a process, definitely. And um, yeah, maybe it's interesting for your listeners because uh, most often I think that um, those companies uh, have their focus on actually closing and finishing projects rather than starting new ones. And that's, that's what... Uh, in the end, uh, drives uh, drives this process to be successful, I think. Yeah, that, that's super interesting. And I remember some... Organizations uh, that love to start initiatives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. And then, uh, okay, let's uh, talk about something else. <laughs> <laughs> so perfect. Um, how would you describe your relationship to processes? Um. I guess it comes together when saying uh, unexcited but opinionated, um, yeah. and that might might really sound strange because um, with Kuviki um, we help organizations to improve their processes uh, through collaboration. So professionally, that's that's all what I'm about, right? Um, and I'm convinced that an organization can only be permanently successful um, if it has their processes in check, right? But I didn't invent the idea of a process; it's not new, right? So so it's not exciting to me in that sense. Um, of course, all the developments also like uh, process mining, local digitalization, et cetera, that, that's, that's exciting. But the idea of a process is, is kind of given to me. And um, maybe to, to use the analogy, um, in my eyes, uh, a process um, are to organization what shoes are to runners, right? So you can take them off. You cannot make use of them, but it really hurts. And uh, in the end, they should feel natural. They should be supportive and they shouldn't cut off the uh, the blood flow, right? Um, so, so that's why I'm uh, often amazed at how explicitly people talk about the importance of processes, because for me, for me, it's given, right? In my, my world, the, the existence of a process is a necessity that arises from the uh, collaboration between different people, between, um, humans and machines, between organizations also. And, um, processes are just a consequence of the division of labor, if you think about it. Um, so, and if you want to optimize um, that work being done, uh, you really should think about the sequence of activities from start to finish, right? That's that's what people mean when they say from end to end. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my eyes, or at the end of the day, that's that's just the core. Or that, that should be the core of process management. Okay. Yeah, that's so true. Okay. Can, can you relate to that unexcitement if you think about the 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 um, The fundamental idea of a process. Absolutely, I'm, I'm always asking, what's the alternative? So, if mm. there is no process, what do you do without? So, yeah, um, yeah. Let's, 
Yeah, that's true. Okay, cool. Yeah. So then, let's have a closer look onto your tool, which is QWiki or QWiki. Um, and um, could you describe to our listeners what the underlying philosophy of the tool is to start off? So um, basically, uh, if you if you look at our company uh, website, we always say uh, we are Model Aachen and we stand for interactive management systems. And if you if you look closer to that, we really mean that modern process communication is multilateral. So it's it's not a one way street. It's not top down, and it should be in all directions. Or actually, it is in act in all directions. And as a tool, we enable that multilateral communication about processes. And uh, that is because uh, we really care about um, helping employees conducting their processes, right? So enabling the process uh, participants and uh, we should have, um, we, we should, or we think that they should have the lowest entry barrier to um, A, retrieve the knowledge um, they need to actually conduct their process and B, to share their knowledge with a process model, right? So if they make an experience, if they have a great idea to improve the process, that's that's the the point where we really want them to engage with the process model and to enrich it with their knowledge. Um, and that that's why we think maybe that's interesting to your listeners that uh, who are looking for a tool, we are really um, stressing the point that it's very important to think about whom you are addressing, right? Uh, are you trying to address humans? Are you uh, trying to to address a software? W what's 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 the point? Whom are you addressing with your process models? And um, uh, that that might uh, sound a bit extreme, but uh, I think personally, and uh, we can argue about that. But if you're trying to address a human being, they shouldn't need to learn a new process language to retrieve the information given in the process. They just really want the information that's necessary for them to conduct their process. And uh, if you're if you're trying to address a human, don't try to impress somebody with your process notation. Basically, that's that that's my my opinion here. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe uh, to to summarize the the term interactive management system uh, in in three points. Um, I would say it's um, synchronicity, decentralization, and integration. So with uh, synchronicity. Uh, I mean that real world decision. So sitting in a leadership meeting and um, having a decision, making a decision that um, that changes a process, that should be uh, reflected in your documentation nearly synchronized. Um, decentralization, we really think uh, that you should put uh, process owners in the driver's seat, right? So your employees are in the driver's seat when it comes to processes. And integration uh, basically means that employees can use the system as their or in their day to day work. And that's where the benefit come from. That's that's the three characteristics that I would like to summarize uh, interactive management systems. OK, cool. That's interesting. And how does the tool look like? So the interface and so on. Um, so obviously, if you ask me, <laughs> uh, I, I would say it's uh, it's very easy, it's lightweight, it's simple. Uh, but but uh, sure, I mean, uh, have a look yourself. I think you uh, you already looked into QWiki. Yeah, I already had one, <laughs> and I was really surprised by the Viking uh, welcoming me there. So maybe yeah. you can tell the listeners a little bit more about that. Yeah, sure. So so um, we thought about re really thought about how to uh, make the the product as simple as possible but still we recognize that uh, people want to be introduced to the system right they want to be welcomed they want to emotionally um, uh, f feel welcomed in the system so that's why we started with guided tours and uh, we came up with the with the um, with the Viking uh, that um, introduces you to the system if you enter it once and uh, it it stays there. So, so if you are like, uh, coming back from a vacation two weeks and you are, uh, want to, uh, know again where like the, the top bar search, okay, that's an easy one. But uh, if you want to uh, see what's new, the Viking introduces you to everything that's new. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a really fun way of engaging employees, I think. Yeah, definitely. I was, uh, really surprised by this. And, uh, that's what I'm looking for when, uh, looking for a human centric tool so being welcomed uh, by by the tool and being somehow entertained as as well yeah. and get all the information there yeah. and i and i love that you use the word entertained because that kind of shows the emotionality right 
I mean, if we speak about processes, we always go like input, outputs, who's responsible, blah, 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 yeah, blah. Yeah. But, but people are still people, right? It, yeah. It's a people business and people want to feel uh, welcome. They want to uh, kind of be informed, even if they could do it on themselves. Uh, so that's the whole point of change management. And um, that's, that's uh, a big part of our work. Um, so, yeah, I think um, to to secure the um, also sustainable user engagement, uh, it comes back to lowering the entry barrier to engage with the software. Right. So, the yeah. to, if you think about the, the value of the system, of a process management system, is directly and causally related or connected to the engagement rate. So, if you're writing processes and nobody looks at them, nobody uses them, nobody makes use of them, it doesn't it doesn't change the company a bit. And um, to, just to give you a, a concrete understanding, maybe sometimes it's it's nice to hear some numbers um, to to uh, understand what I mean with uh, user engagement. Um, it isn't uncommon for an, for a medium sized company, let's say 500, 600 employees, um, to have two thirds of the employee logging into the system every month and retrieving information. And um, yeah, that. If you if you um, count the numbers, um, that ends up in having um, a system that has over twenty thousand uh, views per month, and uh, also, and that's what I really like about the interactivity. Right, it's not only retrieving the information, but also enriching the process models with the experience you make. Uh, so that's why we always uh, look at the um, the amount of edits done per month, and mm -hmm. um, in, in that case, in that um, uh, scenario. That might be uh, over a thousand small and big edits uh, that in the end um, leads to 200 approved or 150 to 200 approved process improvements per month. So that's that's how you can see how the QWiki really, really enables the development of the organization in the end. Yeah. That's super interesting, cool. And how, how does it look like, uh, how do you map processes in QWiki? Yeah, so so maybe we uh, uh, stay with the example of the the medium sized company, right? Yeah. Because uh, I think I mean Germany is made of of um, medium sized companies, and uh, in in Europe that's that's kind of the backbone of our um, our society. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, yeah, for a medium sized company, it might look like um, you have on the first level you have a process map, right? Which is just a simplified process orientated uh, model of your organization. And um, if if I like in my client work um, ask um, companies if they have one if they already thought about one, um, the point that's very important here um, is to be mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive, and and that's because if you start in the system right, you want to see everything, and you should be able to click to level two, mm -hmm. to the process overviews. Um, and uh, they basically are a more detailed overview of the um, processes in that area, and uh, they um, give you an easy entry to level three. So if you click on the on the process name, um, that's in the end uh, the process description. That's the process model that often uh, the end user is actually looking for, right? Yeah. So so that's that's why we say, or that's why uh, a customer of, um, of ours, for example, had the slogan that um, in in the past uh, it needed three months. Or three weeks, I think, uh, to retrieve an information from somewhere. And now it's three clicks, so you go uh, level one, level two, level three. And, yeah, yeah, uh, okay. yeah. They, they made they made a huge uh, pro project marketing effort from that. Um, <laughs> and then you have uh, obviously level four, which is like very concrete work descriptions, um, Excel documents. You know everything, the nitty gritty details of um, the things that you actually need to to conduct the process, right? Um, so, so that would be the the four level of a medium sized company, and um, obviously here form follows function, right? So, uh, if you have like a um, a company that's a multinational company with uh, multiple geographical sites, you know, they might have production sites somewhere. Um, they would before that have a let's say level zero, uh, which would give you an overview of all the sites with their respective process maps. And uh, to, to them, they are uh, inherited global guidelines, right? So you, mm -hmm. you might have uh, processes that are overspanning all sites and then they are inherited to the local process maps of the production sites, for example. Okay. So, and um, where do you graphically map the process flow? Is that on, on level three um, then? Uh, and which uh, notation are you using? Or is that on level four? 
Uh, so yes, it, it would be level three. Um, yeah. Okay. And uh, you can di- you can use different ones. Okay. And um, I, I I won't bore <laughs> your your listeners with uh, you know the details of uh, BPM uh, M N for example. But um, I think the the one that's maybe um, uh, or might come to surprise for somebody is that we are really successful with just tabular form. So just bullet points okay. that are ordered or that are um, um, in, in a table, basically, uh, where you have all the documents you need attached to that, where you have the links to other systems that you need to use to uh, conduct the process, um, where there's roles um, that are mapped to the uh, to the um, uh, process step, right? Mm-hmm. And so, so that uh, might be might be interesting to to have a look at. Uh, if you if you didn't see it yet, and uh, yeah, I, I guess uh, later we we come to the point where where listeners can have can have a look at that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, then uh, let's dive deeper into the the modeling of the processes. How however uh, you do that, if you do that in written or in in graphical. So um, let's imagine uh, you are a process modeler and you want to map processes. How do I proceed? What do I do? How do I go into the tool and uh, yeah bring the information there in the end so so um first of all um in reality i think sometimes people don't know if they are about to model a process because they don't know if somebody already did it so um i would describe the the process um of creating new new sp- uh, process in in three steps um but this comes to the assumption that beforehand you actually know that there is a gap you have to fill right mm-hmm. so maybe let's let's uh, start with um the the first assumption which is you know that you want to create um a, a new process and yeah. then it's the three steps right you navigate uh, to the uh, correct location so if for example you want to uh, create a process that's um about conducting a new sales presentation uh you should navigate to the respective area, which would be win customers, for example. So mm-hmm. on the process map, you click on win customers and uh, there you can uh, just use the button, create a new process. And um, then as a third step, you can enter all the details um, in the given process template, right? So we, we want some um, some unity in that, uh, in that system. So yeah. we start with a process template. And um, here I think um, for an organization, it's very important. If you think about the value that you're delivering there, it is very important to hit the right level of detail here. Because um, in a sample size, uh, we once assessed that 88.2%, so you could argue if it's 80 or 90, but 88.2% in that sample uh, of processes change, of, of changing uh, processes are taking place on the level, how should a process be carried mm-hmm. out and not which process steps come next. So, so you're not changing the big pictures, but details, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, that's the secret sauce in the end. So focusing on the important details, the the ones that are mission critical, that ones that enable people to do the right thing um, and link the documents that are needed, share the knowledge about how to do it and basically share everything that's that's necessary mm-hmm. um, to the to the process participant. Okay. That's uh, interesting, and I, I definitely uh, recommend our listeners to have a closer look onto the tool to see how it looks like there. Um, but let's imagine now I'm an employee and I want to retrieve process information for a specific activity. How do I proceed? I log into the tool, and then yeah, sure. So, so I hope you're already logged in because of you know single sign on, etc. Oh yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> But um, I, I guess there's um, uh, three ways of doing that. Um, first is just clicking on the process map, right? So, that, yeah. so that's the, the same bo- um, way of, of um, finding the information as the person does who actually creates the new process. So first would be uh, navigating through the process map. Second would be uh, just use the search. You know, there's a top bar search and uh, the search goes through all the process models, all the work instructions, mm-hmm. uh, and even all the attached documents, right? So if you have an Excel file or in PDF where uh, the, the given search term is uh, is inserted, you'll also find that. Uh, and the third way would be um, to uh, use your own favorite pages um, on your personal page. So if you mm-hmm. use uh, QWiki Q- for um, some years, you might... Um, uh, um, put favorites on you know the the processes you uh, typically need uh, role based basically and then uh, you you have an overview there so 
I guess that's that's the three ways uh, I always think about. So navigating through the process map, uh, using the, the a top bar search, or I'm um, going to uh, favorite pages. But obviously, technically, there's more, right? Somebody could send you a link, say, hi, Miko, just uh, you might have a look at the uh, conducting uh, sales presentation thing. Uh, that That's new. Maybe you can give me your opinion here. And that's that's also a way, definitely. And can I also ask the Viking? Uh, no, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but but that's that's actually a great idea. I'll, I would love that. Uh, I'll, I'll speak to product management afterwards. Yeah, definitely, you should. For me, it was yeah. like uh, this uh, customer support uh, feature you might know from all the different websites where uh, on the yeah, yeah. uh, right-hand side corner bottom that pops up and you can ask um, what you're looking for or something like that. So no, that that, that's that's a great idea. I mean, we could uh, we could just use the um, the same yeah. search function, exactly. right? That's in the yeah. top of our search and put it in the Viking, you know, uh, what process are you looking for? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's a great idea. <laughs> Thanks for that so, one. <laughs> yeah, okay. Maybe we can see that in an upcoming release. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, perfect. Then um, let's talk about the new process principles, um, which help to get to more human-centric BPM approach. And there, um, I, w I would like to know, like, how does your tool support to inspire people for excellent processes? Yeah, so, so that's a great question because, you know, first of all, you have to think, when does somebody feel inspired? Right. And that's very individual. That, that comes back to, um, to culture, co comes back to the individual uh, situation. But, um, if you, if you think about that hard, really nobody feels inspired by just sitting on the sideline. Right. Yeah. And, um, imagine the example of a sales leader or a head of, uh, head of production, maybe. And think about them proudly reading out rules written by others. And I, I think I think that's very unlikely, and that's why we uh, with Kuviki uh, we put people into the driver's seat uh, by decentralizing process mm -hmm. ownership, basically, and um, in that way, true knowledge experts uh, feel and actually are responsible for their process, and uh, that's that's just not achieved by writing somebody else's um, role or department in the swim lane. Yeah. And uh, I think that's that's a huge misconception in process management in general. Um, and um, I think it's rather achieved by giving uh, somebody the tools to create, change, and improve their content and to, to actually make it their own, right? Uh, because in the end, if you think think about it, it's it's insane. If, if you have a production process in reality and somebody who, who's leading that in reality, and then you have somebody else that somewhere models a process to that. I mean, how how high are it, or how likely is it that um, that it gains acceptance, right? The, the written process model in reality. Yeah. You you nearly never see this. Yeah, that's true. Um, and um, yeah, really uh, putting somebody in the driver's seat uh, that I think uh, creates a sense of ownership um, and also a place in the bigger picture, right? Um, if if you think about like the war uh, war of talent and and uh, you know all the people uh, quite quitting, etc., uh, it really helps to to um, uh, have a sense of uh, where I am I in the bigger picture, like the work I am doing, where is that contributing to to the existence of the organization to to our success. And uh, yeah, we, we really, really um, uh, use that uh, that mechanism. And uh, now think about this, the sales leader uh, mentioned earlier, um, because with that sense of ownership, nobody really wonders uh, that she really cares about the implementation of the process and is highly motivated to, to bring that process orientation from the model into her department right mm -hmm. and that that's in the end how how process management uh, I'll, i'll say grassroots process management um helps to to inspire people i guess yeah so the idea there is that uh, like the sales leader can put in um his or her own processes or all the details into the tool right Exactly. And you, you can work with approval uh, uh, workflows there. So maybe you have process management looking over that, et cetera, uh, mm -hmm. just, just to have some um, you know, so, so, um, like a security net. Um, but uh, in the end, yes, it's uh, giving everybody the chance to, to um, enrich process models, to create process models. Okay. That's a super interesting approach. And um, 
yeah, I have some images already in my mind, um, which I used in the past um, several times that um, the, the leader of a team of mechanics climbs on a box and once a week he reads out the new processes to the employees. <laughs> Which were provided to him by a central department, which definitely is not convincing <laughs> you, if you're you standing there. That. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, cool. And um, let's talk about another new process principle, which is to disrupt established processes, which doesn't mean to destroy established processes, uh, but uh, to rethink what is there and to yeah encourage the people to rethink processes. So how does uh, QWiki support to disrupt established processes? So, so I love that you point out that disruption is not a uh, destruction, <laughs> because I think that's that's a fear that comes hand in hand with the yeah. word uh, for for some some people, um, or for some organizations. And um, I, I guess ultimately um, it comes down to two drivers. Um, one is the question: um, Is disruptive behavior rewarded in my mm -hmm. organization? Is it useful to the organization? And two. Um, how costly or time consuming maybe is it to disrupt the process? Right. And if you think about the first, the behavioral rewards, um, I guess that's mainly, even if I would love to be able to change that with a tool, <laughs> um, I guess it's mainly a cultural thing in a given organization. So you can ask yourself, uh, is it seen as a positive trait to act disruptively? Or how positive is direction or was direction the path to disruptive behavior? Uh, is it publicly supported by leadership? Is it really welcomed? Yeah. And, um, yes. So, so I, I think as a tool, you can, you can only serve the company culture. It will be, you will have a very hard time to, to actually change it like from one day to the other. Mm -hmm. Um, but on the other hand, uh, looking at the second question, that's the, uh, the, um, uh, the cost of disruption, we really, really, try to minimize that one with our tool. So just to give you an idea of how, yeah. uh, basically nothing can, can break in the tool, right? So the user has the security uh, that nothing can break through automatic versioning when changes are made, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So that gives you a sense of security first. Then basically just through the existence of Kuviki, you create the opportunity. So everybody can propose a change to an existing process, which gives you the opportunity to disrupt in the first place. And, um, if then it comes back uh, to company culture, if then um, it's also welcomed, uh, you, you have a way of disrupting. Uh, further, it's uh, it's easy control. So, you know, fast approval through automated um, information flow to process owners, etc. So actually, it feels easier as a leader to to give away some of the control to let people come in and enrich process model, create process model, if you still have an easy way of controlling things so so that you can uh, see that there's no chaos going on, etc. Um, and uh, because I think that's that's a fear. Uh, yeah. I think you you were smiling with that one because that's something you recognize. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, also just um, a very lightweight way of uh, information distribution, right? So once you uh, disrupt the process, um, once um, uh, um, you know a new process is created or something's changed, uh, with our tool we really uh, offer easy ways of um, of information flow, right? So it might be uh, read receipts uh, sending out to participants, and so so they can confirm they read, and uh, that that's uh, one of the ways that you can very easily distribute the new information that's necessary to um, to make the disruption sustainable. Um, and yeah, in, in the end, I mean, disrupting is one thing. The other thing is uh, how likely are the odds that this disruption becomes the new reality? And that's very strongly connected to easy consumption of mm. the disrupted process. So um, that's why, for example, we um, in the in the software give uh, readers a chance to just automatically compare the old against the new process model. And then they rightly see, you know, that change, that change, that's gone, that's new. Uh, so so I think um, we really, uh, really, really try to uh, lower the, the cost of disruption. And then in the end, an organization, um, and, and that might come back to, uh, to several factors, um, has to think about for themselves how much, uh, like how big of a disruption um, can, can we stomach. Yeah. Okay. I really like breaking that down um, to the different features of 
the tour. So thanks for that. And uh, I also love um, the cultural aspects, which you mentioned in the beginning. And um, yeah, but with regards to rethinking processes, it's always good to question the patterns uh, of the existing processes there. And sure, that, that's cool. Sure. And, uh, and I mean, that's that's um, uh, great. I, I read uh, lots of uh, lots of articles um, uh, from you and also in the podcast where you think about where you really think about the purpose of a process. Yeah. Right. So because sometimes, you know, market changes and and the purpose is just not given anymore and then you should be able to just discard the process and just 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 leave it i mean it it used it made good use in the past but uh maybe it's not of use anymore and uh, we can come up with another process and, and the the cost of doing that should be very low yeah yeah that's true but it's really hard from an emotional uh, perspective to let go of existing processes that's true. there that's so, true yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. Super interesting. Is there anything else in terms of rethinking processes that our listeners should know about uh, QWiki? Yeah, so maybe coming um, coming back to a point I made earlier, and that's really think hard about whom are you addressing with your process models? Mm -hmm. Is it a human being? Is it a machine? Is it a piece of software? And um, that that's something I think that is overseen sometimes mm -hmm. because, you know, you, you learn about this process notation and there's this fancy tool and, you know, uh, you, you can you can have automatic uh, conformance checking with process mining. And that's great. I, I mean, uh, also, like, I, I'm kind of a data nerd, I would say, and I, I love to see those developments. But those are for a few people in an organizations. And yeah. I, I guess that's an expert tool. And that's that's good. If that's your use case, do that. But if you're trying to, um, you know, enable process participants with shared knowledge, then you should maybe, maybe think about that and how you achieve that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the second would be, um, uh, you know, do you really want uh, to engage process participants participant in the um, knowledge sharing right and uh, if yes if if yes you want uh, you see that it makes sense to have the ones that actually conduct the processes um you know um, kind of somehow uh, bringing their knowledge to the process um then looking for a tool you you should be aligned to that the tool should be aligned to that and a very very practical um easy way um of, of checking that would be um to check if the tool distinguishes between, you know, reading and writing laws, uh, licenses. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that's, that, that's a very easy way of doing that because, um, um, if you think about, um, you know, if a license model, um, is created in a way that a writing license is way more expensive than a viewing license, really think hard about how you are um, how you are uh, going to use that tool, right? Yeah. And uh, don't don't be surprised if um, uh, if you if you will see in reality that uh, the writing will be done by a few for all the others. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay, cool. And um, I think we'll have a closer look onto the pricing model of your tool in a few seconds. But before. Uh, I would love to have a broader outlook into the future. And I would like to ask you which developments you see in the market of BPM tools right now coming up. Yeah. So, so um, first of all, uh, maybe I'm not the best one to ask. Uh, I don't have the, the broad overview, I guess. Uh, but in the end, for me, process management uh, and process management tools for that um, are supporting tools right to to support the emerging trends and challenges in the business world and in a, in a broader sense in society as a whole and uh, with that being said you could um, uh, try to derive uh, bpm trends from societal trends right uh, or from organizational trends and uh, maybe maybe to to name a few and you can choose the one that uh, i um, i can elaborate on that later but uh, i would say there's a higher speed of change firstly secondly uh, you know regulation is increasing uh, third digitalization fourth higher fluctuations and or uh, yeah five or closing i would say that uh, process orientation is here to stay and uh, but process vari variants uh, might become more important um I'm not sure. Do, do you do you want me to speak on any of those? Because uh, I, I have several opinions. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I would be curious uh, what you think about regulations there. Yeah. So um, 
I guess um, we can agree that uh, there is more and more um, regulatory requirements uh, placed on companies. And mm -hmm. um, th that's not judgmental, right? It's, um, I mean, there's uh, cybersecurity, there's uh, sustainability, and there's, there's just um, things that we have to take care of as a society and uh, mm -hmm. organizations um, follow that. And um, so, so I think um, companies should really think hard about um, if they have a smooth way of oper uh, operationalizing those regulation, those policies, etc., into their organizations effectively. Because that that's the whole point of regulation, right? That somehow something changes somewhere. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so I think that integrated process models are the way to go here. Because if you do not integrate different domains, let's let's say with sustainability and information security yeah. maybe, into one and the same process, you will most certainly run into compliance problems somewhere, somewhere. And um, I guess that's a very big chance uh, for a business process management in general to moderate those different requirements that regulations into process in an integrated way so that a process participant has an an easy way to be compliant and, and that's that's a topic i think that the integrated process um that that's something that that will um be uh in the focus in, in upcoming years okay that's uh super interesting you know i'm coming from a highly regulated um, yeah too <laughs> aviation um, industry so um c c just a quick Deep dive question on that. Um, are there already features in the tool supporting addressing different um, legal or normative requirements into processes? Yes. So um, there's multiple ways in Kubernetes of doing that. But I think in the end, it always comes back to what are you trying to achieve? And I think looking at uh, all the compliance topics, you you try to achieve a compliant behavior, right? So uh, that that's why we say the process model that is used by the process participant should at the point or at the process step where it is necessary should link to you know the um uh, information security mm -hmm. uh, uh, regulation or that um you know risks that arise from uh, you know, a specific domain uh, from the aviation sector, for example, are attached to the process. And um, it it always, um, the idea always is to integrate those regulations into the process mm -hmm. so that the process owner actually can make sure that it follows. Because think about it the other way. If you just, and, and that's, that's things I see in reality, if you just write policies and guidelines and uh, all those things and you just, Put them next to each other somewhere on a file server. I mean, who reads those 140 pages documents about information security, right? You yeah. you have to think really hard about where's that paragraph. Where do I have to follow that? In which processes, in which process steps should that be integrated? And uh, that that's that's the whole point in in Kuviki, and that's uh, how we also have, uh, for example, an, a list of standards in the Kuviki where you can uh, map, you know, um, mm -hmm. chapters of a given standard to the processes, and where you can show in a very easy way that you fulf fulfill those standards. Okay, yeah, that's that's very good. Ah, that's super interesting. Maybe it's already too detailed to to ask different <laughs> questions on that, but uh, I'm somehow a nerd on um, connecting legal and normative requirements yeah. to processes, do conformity check there, and so on too. Yeah, and it, it's. I mean, we can we can make a different uh, podcast about, um, <laughs> about that, but um, I think it's a very very hard thing, right? Because you have all those uh, domain experts. You have the cybersecurity guy. You have uh, you know um, um, a person who's um, taking care, or multiple persons taking care about uh, the aviation specifics. Yeah. You know, quality is there, um, and there's all those different dom domain experts. And really, if you think hard about it, do they have an incentive to integrate? And and, and that's we were speaking about the emotional point, right? Yeah. Sometimes it's uh, really, really, really hard to to break up those structures mm -hmm. um, and integrating that in the in in the process model. But if you achieve that, I mean, it's it's a hell of a weapon. Yeah, exactly. So from an employee perspective, it should be yeah. 
<laughs> invisible. Uh, yeah. If this is something coming from this or that requirement, I just want to perform my process without thinking yeah. about all the requirements in the background. Yeah, that, that's super cool. So um, that's also an interesting part. But um, let's get back to the more general topics. Um, so what is uh, specifically on the roadmap for the further development of QWiki? Um Yeah, so I'm not sure about if my developer, developers <laughs> and product management like me to speak about that. Uh, but but yeah, there there's many specific ideas and features which uh, I already know uh, will be rolled out in the coming months. But uh, maybe to just give you a more holistic view about how we think about uh, the future of the tool, um, we really, really, really think that it is uh, crucially to be fast on your feet as an organization. And that will be a growing competitive advantage in the future. Uh, that will uh, bring you to more customer, less costs, faster time to market, mm -hmm. etc. So e everything you want. <laughs> and uh, this skill basically goes hand in hand with your organization competence of implementing changes to your processes very fast. And uh, with Kuviki, we therefore really care about the life cycle costs of in processes and its related process model and the changes to it. And we think it shouldn't cost you much to change, right? So you should try about lowering those costs because you, you know that you will need to change often faster. Mm -hmm. And if you think about that in detail, because m many people just think, oh, it's a change to process, right? But um, it's many steps, right? So uh, you might start, and I learned that from you, to, to define a, a process per um, a purpose. Uh, you model a process. Um, you have different people uh, approve the model. You instruct participants. They might read the process description. They might interpret it. Interpret it. Um, they might conduct the processes um, somewhere. <laughs> and um, one might audit it afterwards. You might measure it, consolidate all the ideas about improvement, and then again make changes um, to it. And the whole cycle starts all over until you someone uh, you know we we spoke about that earlier discard the process because it's the, the purpose is not given anymore yeah uh, which again is uh, often not trivial if you if you think about it and the biggest part of the actual value that is delivered to the end customer is i think in the conduction of the process mm -hmm. and all the other steps defining modeling approving instructing reading etc Uh, all the other steps, um, we should really, really, really think hard uh, about um, focusing on automation, streamlining, all the other steps to really focus on the conduction of the process because that's where value is created. And all the others, they are not, um, I mean, you, you can't just get rid of them, but, but you have to think about and we really, with our tool, think about uh, streamlining that, right? Because we think that will be a competitive advantage to mm -hmm companies and our customers in the future. Okay, very good. You already picked the pricing model up um, when talking about the tool uh, before, but uh, let's have a closer look onto that. So how does the pricing model for the tool look like? Yeah. So um, b first of all, we, it's very transparent on our website, so maybe we can, mm -hmm. can link to that or something. Sure. Um, and um, in the end, um, it's it's scaling with the number of employees you have, right? So and it's uh, decreasing. So if let's say, for example, you have uh, a company of uh, 1,000 employees um, that and you just use the the QWiki we're speaking about, mm -hmm. and you don't use all the fancy no code digitalization, etc., uh, it would be 1,960 euros a month. Uh, and obviously, if you're smaller or bigger, um, that, that price differs, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, for just a startup with about 50 employees? Um, I, I checked it uh, this morning and it's uh, 275 uh, euros per month. Per month. Um, okay. So so that's that's basically what you're looking at. Okay. But the numbers are on the website as well. Exactly. Yeah. It's okay. just it's okay. just a slider and you can look it up. Uh, uh, okay, that's easy. So um that will be the location to go to to your website if I want to learn more about the tool or are there other sources you would recommend? Um no, I think um our website is the best um best point to start there. Okay. I guess everything everything is on it and there's there's navigations to to bring you to the information that you you need in the moment. Yeah, okay, okay. I put the link into the show notes so it can be easily retrieved by our listeners. Perfect. Cool. That was super interesting flight. I would say um, we're already arrived at uh, the final destination here. Um, but uh, before we leave the aircraft, is there anything else you would like to share with our listeners? 
Um, yeah, so so um, speaking about uh, regulations, etc. I think uh, at some points the discussion might be a bit uh, theoretical. So so I really want you, uh, or I want to invite you to look at uh, two things. Um, one is maybe just try Kuviki yourself. If you go to our website, there's um, an option where you can just uh, say you want to test the Kuviki, and uh, you know you can just create your free test system for our website. And it and is really as easy as you just described because uh, we talked up front a few weeks ago and you said, ah, just go there. And I just entered my email address and the account was created and I was able to see the Viking there. So yeah. <laughs> it's a really easy process. So not much talking to your sales guys and so on. Yeah, just no, it's, try it out. It's, right? it's very streamlined. And uh, actually, sometimes uh, people ask me, well, um, uh, I mean, you, you, you must hold back some features there. And no, we just give you 60 days and you can mm -hmm. try yourself you can uh, use the, the the full set of features and um basically um uh, yeah that that's our offer you can uh, just create your your own set test system there and uh, yeah try try the viking <laughs> yeah exactly this is what i want to tell the people out there just go there and uh, log in to find out more about the viking that's a super cool feature i would say yeah Yeah, and the the other uh, thing that I would like um, to invite your your listeners to um, might be just to take a look at our real world examples on our website. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can speak about interactivity and uh, user engagement all day long, but uh, we we got examples of uh, real world uh, companies on our website. So um, uh, yeah, for example, there's uh, this the story of. Um, a company with uh, about 250 employees that uh, saves over a million euros um, a year with Kuviki by engaging employees okay. in process discussions and uh, and yeah also having um, so much handling of the process models uh, automated in the background and I, I think that's that's really interesting because uh, interesting because you know sometimes there's this discussion about uh, value delivered by systems right mm -hmm. and um, if you're looking um, if you're listening and you're you're looking for a BPM tool, um, you might um, uh, stand in front of the challenge of, you know, you know, proving proving the value, and and that's very detailed. There, they they really, really, really looked into all the driving factors, and uh, there's this uh, much much of the engagement rates, etc. Is, uh, is transparent there. So um, yeah. Okay, I think I just put the links into the show notes as well, yeah, so that, they that's great. can easily found by the listeners. Cool. Vincent, thank you so much for flying with New Process Podcast here. Um, just my final question, as always, how would you describe your flight experience with just three words? I, I'm not good at three words. <laughs> <laughs> but but I started with saying that I normally sleep during flights and I, I didn't hear. <laughs> and and I said I would be unexcited about processes and uh, now, you know, speaking to you and, and thinking about the topic in more detail, uh, That might be wrong. Maybe I'm very excited about processes <laughs> in the in the end, um, or at least about uh, how how um, organizations can really make it their competitive advantage. So so yeah, it was great. Thanks, Mirko. Yeah, thank you very much for providing all these insights, and I'm really looking forward to learn more about the tool in the future. So have a great day. Bye bye. Bye bye, Mirko. Let's recap today's new process inspiration. Yeah, cool. <laughs> have I already said that I really love the Viking? <laughs> so for me, this is a super cool feature to interact with the users, to provide information and to entertain them as we discussed it in the interview. And as we also already talked about, I could imagine that it would be possible to push this feature even further and transform the Viking into an interactive character which guides the users through the tool and through the processes as well so um, yeah i also find their wiki based approach really interesting so even if it's possible to add graphical process models to their process descriptions they focus on describing the processes like in a wiki in a text-based way so that's a very interesting approach from my point of view and you should definitely try it out on your own Therefore, just uh, go to their website and create a test account. It's really as simple as we described it. Yeah, cool. So let's have an outlook to what is coming up. 
even if there are so many exciting topics on the list, I have decided to switch back to a bi-weekly publishing schedule for some weeks at least, because I realized that I need more time to really work through all the insights of the expert interviews and to extract all the learnings for you. And um, yeah, that's why I'm going back to a bi-weekly publishing schedule. But in the next episode... We'll deep dive into the topic of process strategy. Therefore, I will be talking to a real strategy expert and uh, I'll try to figure out how to apply all his expertise to processes, to create a process strategy, for example. So, for today, thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye and auf Wiedersehen. You've been listening to the New Process Podcast. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode for more tools, methods, and best practices to rethink your process and push it to the next level. Next level. Thank you for listening. So before you leave, in the episode, we briefly talked about process purpose. And for me, developing a process purpose is a super weapon to inspire people for processes. And if you would like to learn more about how to develop a process purpose, then just go to newprocesslab.com slash purpose and download the free process purpose canvas there and check out how to use this to develop a process purpose and inspire your people for your processes. So enjoy. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Stop, stop. One more thing before you leave. I have to share a personal story with you. So... When I left Lufthansa, I told my team that they could use one thing as an indicator if I fail with newprocesslab.com and come back. So if they get a new process calendar from me at the end of the year, they'll know I'm not coming back. And guess what? I just ordered the new process calendar for next year. So if you are interested in receiving one of these calendars, just go to newprocesslab.com slash calendar and enter the drawing. So maybe you'll be in luck and receive one copy of the new process calendar. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.